Trout Unlimited story begins with a chance meeting on the famed Ossable River in Michigan. Two men named George, American Motors CEO George Mason and prominent conservationist George Griffith, were waiting in line to launch their skiffs for a day's float down the river. A charter member of Ducks Unlimited, Mason, imagined a new organization built on the DU model, but dedicated to protecting his first love, wild trout streams, which were suffering under the weight of pollution, poor management, and a hatchery system that was dumping 1.5 million catchable trout a year into Michigan streams, decimating the wild brown trout fishery. Griffith believed there was a need for some organization to be thinking about where trout came from, where they lived, and what kind of home they have, rather than just the harvest of them. It took nine years to make some medicine, as Griffith liked to say. TU held its first official meeting in Grayling, Michigan. Mason had sadly passed away a few years earlier, but the group did include a rod maker and wild trout evangelist named Art Newman. Newman, who was then TU's temporary and unpaid executive director, began hearing from people across the country who were requesting certification as chapters. He set to work with one goal in mind, transform TU from a Michigan-based movement into a national conservation leader. In three years, he doubled the size of the organization, starting 30 new chapters. The first national campaign win came in the early 1960s, when Montana's River Rats chapter saved 20 miles on the Big Hole River from inundation by stopping the construction of the Rachel Dam. Local activist George Grant led the charge. From the beginning, TU has built upon its reputation as an organization of conservation-minded anglers who rely upon scientific principles to promote quality trout and salmon fisheries for their intrinsic values as reminders of ecological health. Almost five decades later, TU is 140,000 members strong with over 400 chapters nationwide. One of those chapters is North Bay Trout Unlimited, the oldest existing chapter in California. In 1972, Chuck Boss, the executive director of TU, came to Marin County and established the chapter. It wasn't long before new officers encouraged the Department of Fish and Game to establish a wild trout program, bringing to light the unethical and unlawful practices of snagging steelhead and salmon in many of the smaller creeks. The early 1980s marked the beginning of NVTU stream habitat work with the construction of a fish ladder near the Marin Town and Country Club in Fairfax and a second one at Saunders Avenue in San Anselmo. In 1982, hatch boxes were placed on the tributaries of Lagunitas Creek containing 20,000 coho salmon eggs which were decimated by the torrential rains of 1983. In 1984, a fish ladder was completed on the Giacomini Ranch in Point Reyes, as well as a fish ladder installed in Fairfax's Cascade Creek. In 1984, we saw the great weekend for the fish, with trees planted, gabions placed to curtail erosion, fences built to exclude cattle, Check dams constructed to slow the flow on hillsides with a Hewitt ramp created to provide holding water for young fish. Rearing troughs were constructed behind the Marin Municipal Water District Treatment Plant in San Geronimo Valley in 1985. Volunteers fed and cared for 24,000 young coho, releasing them as fingerlings. Eggs were collected from the returning adults for fertilization in the improved hatchery over the next few years, resulting in the return of over 500 fish into the Lagunitas system in 1995. In the same year, an informational kiosk and plaque honoring Leo T. Cronin was installed by MMWD at the salmon viewing area near Shafter Bridge. Leo was a leading force in NBTU projects and the beneficiary of many awards from the community and TU National. Work continued through the 1990s with a 10-year Great Weekend Anniversary Workday. Volunteers installed large woody debris, providing shelter from predators for the young fish. The year culminated in the removal of Roy's Dam and the addition of a fish ladder, which was partially funded by TU Embrace a Stream Grant. Bruce Babbitt, then Secretary of the Interior, accepted TU's invitation to come and help tear down the dam. More work continued into the new century with the focus on Devil's Gulch, a major tributary of the Lagunitas system. Exclusionary fencing was erected, 
trail work with new footbridges away from spawning fish were constructed. Failing culverts were replaced by wet crossings and native plants were reintroduced. Gates were also replaced along with rail fences and information signs were posted. North Bay Trout Limited received the best chapter award in 2006. NBTU has worked to improve habitat for the McLeod River Red Band Trout, the Golden Trout, the Lahotan Cutthroat Trout, and the Paiute Cutthroat Trout. The restoration of the endangered Paiute began in the mid-1980s when TU volunteers and biologists from the DFG backpack into the Eastern Sierra, stabilizing the banks of Silver King Creek, moving non-native fish below Llewellyn Falls so as not to interfere with the natural Paiute strain and improve stream habitat. In 2009, National TU's 50th anniversary, the best 10 were named, those 10 volunteers who had given the most to TU over its lifetime. Longtime NBTU member Stan Griffin was one of those named for his work locally and throughout the state. That same year, NBTU began its work with the National Park Conservancy in Redwood Creek near Muir Beach, assisting in the return of the creek to its natural flow. Native plants were reintroduced near the reconstructed lagoon to serve as a resting place for arriving adult coho salmon. Bundles of small wood were attached to the stream bed to provide shelter for newly hatched fry. NBTU considers Redwood Creek and Devil's Gulch Creek important ongoing projects and will continue to support the work there. Grants to repair wet crossings and another to install large woody debris are designed to provide refuge for fry from predators. In 2011, NBTU was recognized as having the most outstanding website by TU National. In 2012, we were presented the Ted Wellman Award by the Marin Conservation League for demonstrating high standards for protecting, preserving water resources in Marin and the state. One weekend day each fall, over 100 kids and adults attend our popular first cast event. This instructional event is designed to teach 8 to 18 year olds the basics of fishing, including casting, stream entomology, knot tying, fly tying, and equipment care and handling. There are two additional stations. One teaches arts and crafts for younger children, and another teaches fly casting for adults. North Bay Trout Limited also provides a follow-up day to give kids and adults the chance to apply what they have learned. For the past 25 years, Chuck Schultz and the volunteers of North Bay Trout Limited have equipped classrooms in Marin, Sonoma, and San Francisco with insulated aquariums. Children of all ages have learned about trout and the habitat needed to help them survive. Working in coordination with the Department of Fish and Game, Marine Municipal Water District, and Project Wild, the program has been an ongoing and growing success, reaching nearly 15,000 North Bay students over the last 25 years. NBTU organizes the program regionally and coordinates permitting, seminars for teachers, and NBTU mentors new to the program, as well as providing curriculum assistance to teachers. DFG then arranges for fertilized eggs to be packed, transported, and delivered to each school by NBTU mentors. The mentors assist with aquarium setup and maintenance, egg delivery, and special presentations in the classrooms, as well as assisting with the release of the fish. Each student drops their egg into a ready tank. They eagerly watch their eggs develop and hatch into alvin that eventually become free-swimming fry. During this time period, teachers apply techniques and activities in environmental education. The fish are then transported to Upper Lagunitas Creek to be released into their new habitat. In 2009, our program coordinator Chuck Schultz earned National TU's Youth Education Award for his long and successful leadership career of our Trout in the Classroom program. Our chapter's general membership meetings continue to provide interesting and informative lectures and guest speakers covering such topics as conservation, fishing venues, and the latest fly fishing techniques. Annual outings for members, families, and guests to Northern California's fabled trout hotspots, such as Hat Creek and Manzanita Lake, are an added benefit to membership in this chapter. We take part in statewide activities designed to influence legislative action to support conservation concerns. Fly casting competition between members of the legislature help focus their attention upon our conservation objectives. As you have seen, 
North Bay Trout Limited has been and continues to be a dynamic leader in National TU's goal to conserve, protect, and restore America's trout and salmon fisheries and their watersheds. I'm Fred Mack. I'd like to welcome you to our website. I'm the new president of North Bay Trout Limited. Today we're out moving through the San Geronimo water system, looking at the fruits of our efforts. We have coho in the Leganese arm of the San Geronimo Creek. We've also found coho in Devil's Gulch, another spawning stream. So in two of the sites that we worked on in the past years, we have coho moving through those sites right now, today, and that's what you're seeing. We're about 100 yards off of Sir Francis Drake Boulevard, um, Leganese Creek, uh, which it leads up to the base of uh, Kent Dam. A uh, number of uh, beautifully bright crimson red females uh, moving upstream as well as uh, making their nests. Actually, there's four fish in that hole. I'm seeing four fish in there. There's, there's a female in the front left. There's one coming up behind her right now, and there are two more males behind her. <laughs> this is the efforts, definitely, of the many volunteers that Trout Limited has put in this creek for 40 years. Our hatch boxers actually were put into practice 35 years ago, and the runs we're seeing now are a result of the work that those guys did 40 years ago. All right, well, we're on Devil's Gulch Creek, about a half a mile upstream of Sir Francis Trigg Boulevard, just above, or just below uh, Samuel P. Taylor Park. Uh, it's, uh, 27th of January, we just had three storm fronts move through uh, that have put fresh water in the creek and really given these fish the opportunity to get up where they are. Uh, this is the second set of fish we've seen walking up from the road, the main highway. Uh, I suspect that there's more further up if we were to keep walking. Uh, we could run into some other pond spawning uh, sets. Uh, that female looks to be pretty fresh, and these fish can't be in here more than. I'd say three to four days maximum amount of time. Uh, they've been sitting down in Tamales Bay waiting for this uh, freshwater spike to come through, and, uh, and it has, and that's what's uh, opened up the uh, spawning activity here in the San Geronimo Valley. Uh, it's a pretty good effort to make it up through the uh, shallow gravel areas there, or rock formations where there's pools. So this fish is pretty exhausted this time, just getting up to here. Uh, at this point, that fish is in a good spot, though, because uh, the water from here on up, there's pools like you're seeing right here, and it has places to rest up, and there's numerous places to spawn. Uh, water clarity looks really good. Just this last year, these signs you see here, these fragile area signs have been put up as some of us went through and identified places where people were walking where they shouldn't. Now, we also put up this fencing, a lot of this fencing, to keep people away from the, from the points, such as what's right over there. They're probably fishing behind there, behind those ferns, uh, resting or spawning. Uh, you can see there's a trail that's in there. Uh, other people have disregarded our signs and fence. That may have been what happened here. Uh, as you can see, this looks like some people have walked through here, but that's what we're trying to keep people from walking through with signs and fencing to let the fish just be by them, be left alone, just to uh, you know to spawn without interruption with people just you know being on top of them all the time. Uh, that's what these new fences are about. We put a lot of fencing in up there, as well as a new bridge to, uh, to, to move people. Uh, the master plan is to take this trail in certain places and move it back up the hill, up on the side of the hill here. That's, that's part of the phase three plan that we have to get people even further away from the stream. The results we're having here this year are spectacular. We want to thank our volunteers and their friends that have come and assisted them and the bank work and the in-stream work that we've done. And we'd like to thank you all very much. We invite you to visit our website at nbtu.org.